ladies and gentlemen, our next presentation is about to start. So we have the chance to have Francesco Pagano presenting the next, um, the next presentation. So Francesco is the head of sales at uh, Kibi, Kibi, and uh, Kibi aims to become the global standard for loyalty on the blockchain. And they do this by sharing expertise and exchanging with all stakeholders while offering cutting edge solutions that are easiest to use. So he's here today with us to talk about real life blockchain cases applied to the watchmaking industry. Francesco, thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Ready? It's after lunch. We only have 198 slides. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So today we have two stories, two stories for us. The first one is called Louis Erard, and it's a watch story linked to blockchain. Let's begin. So thanks to Manuel Emch, we started in 2020. We took the watch brand business objective. So what we wanted to do is to create a community of lovers around the brand. And this is fundamental for the future of brands. So a community of collectors that really love everything that the brand does. So what we did is no capex, no setup fee. We started to make a loyalty chamber powered by blockchain where people via purchase could get their perks, the rights, miles, exclusive goodies like NFTs or cryptocurrency. So over the course of 2021, we went to profit. We grew double digits and we over, we had an ROI of 3x versus the investment that we made. So one example. So with the purchase, you can redeem, you can transform your points into any cryptocurrency, any cryptocurrency. So you give value back to people with a currency that is most liquid. And you close the loop, you accept. So we're going to start to accept cryptocurrency in exchange for the watches. So consider one person out of four in the US today trades has cryptocurrency. So you want to talk to new generations. This is not it. It's not over yet. NFTs. So I think Guillaume later will cover NFTs more deeply than I do. I'm going to give you the, the definition that is not in textbook. NFT is the digital representation of something rare, special, unique. How can you use NFTs in the world of watches concretely? So on June 8th, 2021, we dropped 78 box sets of a watch done between Louis Rart and Alan Silverstein. 78 pieces only, something unique. We had a unique code that went to unlock an NFT, which is the digital passport of the watch. Now today, if you trade on eBay or Amazon and you see a watch, you have to prove that the guy is a crook. So you have to buy from them. You have to analyze the watch. You have to prove that the guy is not legit. Today, if the guy does not have the NFT attached to the watch, you can take him down. Amazon or eBay are forced to take him down. It wasn't it. So in the NFT, we put the possibility to engrave the watch with a personalized message that is sent to eternity by a blockchain. Number three, we put a piece of crypto art that you cannot find anywhere else done by Alan Silverstein that accompanies the watch forever. So the 78 box sets retailed for 11 grand, which is three times the average AUR of the watch, went sold out within five minutes. And we put in the hands of people something of value. So within 24 hours on Chrono24, the value of the box set doubled. So this is the operation that you can do thanks to blockchain and its tra track and trace capabilities. The second story is called the inverted funnel. So am I one of the guys who are going to tell you how the future will look like thanks to blockchain? I am. So the future of branding is a future where the brand manager is going to be killed. Blockchain kills the middleman. The branding is done by people. What we do is we empower people to do with the brand whatever the hell they want. So let's go through it. So I'm going to use the 4P model. None. So none of the current marketing models are right. Some of them are useful. The 4P model is one of the most useful models that we have in marketing. Number one, product. So let's make a concrete example. 
I'm going to produce a Royal Oak by Audemars Piguet. I have no clue how many to produce. I don't know. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drop the idea into people's wallets. I'm going to give them a sneak peek. I'm going to ask them how much do they want out of them. Zeroing demand forecast uh, error. I'm going to customize it for them one to one and ship it to door, to their door, bypassing the e-commerce. So I'm going to fill it with perks so that product is as important as meta product features that are whole hidden into the NFT and traded to you individually. This is the future product. And then I'm going to use pricing. I'm going to use pricing dynamically to price it just for you because the watch was done just for you. Distribution is going to help me to deliver it, to take it back, to service it, to do sustainability with it. And then you and I, we're going to do marketing around it. You as the consumer become my marketing department. And we can track and trace this relationship t thanks to blockchain because it's all track. So basically what happens is it's not, all, it's not anymore my brand, but it's our brand. What I do as a brand, I create social capital for you, for your social network. I create, I talk, to, not to your heart, but to your mind. I create value that really increases your social profile. So with Boksha, we didn't kill dust capital, we just decentralized it. Thank you very much. Okay, I did it short and sweet, Guillaume. Short but very intense. <laughs> Thank you a lot, Francesco. Is there Thank like you. any question from the audience before we start like uh, arguing about uh, all this? Or are gonna call a people? How did you grow the community at the beginning? Yeah, correct. So in, in the case of... Uh, so basically, we were lucky because we had already a database of people. But the thing, so I think it's a matter of technology and what Louis R did is they remade completely the collection. So it's always how you do it and also content. So amazing product. So every drop is accompanied by unique perks, unique rights, options. So it's product and meta product that attracts speculators, the people who are interested in investments, new users and so forth. But it's not it. So you do recruitment and then you have to follow up with more and more of the same. And then you really you know, start to build that loyal user base. So basically, I mean, Within tw 12 months, we brought back the brand to profit. So basically, we're at double digits um, EBITDA today, and we're going to grow double digits also in 2022. So it's not that difficult from a technological point of view. So the main, the main job as a marketeer remains the same. Build amazing product and add on top of it meta product features, and technology will help you. The advantage of blockchain is no capex and no setup fee. The blockchain exists already, so you just bridge the brand to the blockchain. Is there any other question? Yep. Thank you. Uh, just in which uh, metaverse we will uh, we will be able to wear? <laughs> you, do you know? Or you have an idea, or, or and when? So this is a question, huh? Yes, yes. Uh, no, thank you very much. Thank you. So this is a different case, sir, versus what was presented earlier. So here we sell real watches, real watches, to be used in this world, in this metaverse called world. So we sell watches that are marked and accompanied by a digital passport that exists only in the loyalty chamber that we do. In the future, Will we do watches to be worn in a metaverse? For example, Roblox, the Central Land, or whatever? Could be, yes. 
and my alter ego will wear watches there. But the first objective here was to push the business. So boost sales, build a community of lovers in this world, and this is what we did. And then we're gonna go into the metaverse as a second phase, but the f number one objective was to sell more watches in this world, hopefully. <laughs> Yes, sir. Just one, one, one thing. <laughs> you were supervising me earlier. Do you see yourself as a technologist, as a marketing expert, as a brand expert? That's question number one. Question number two is, did you have the watch design before you actually pushed it? Or did the community tell you, look, the watch you design is not the one we want. We want something else. Now, I'll start from the second question. I'll start from the second question. So your second question is absolutely spot on. So in this precise example, we had the product. We had an amazing collaboration with Alan Silverstein, and then we pushed it through. Now, in real life, so if we were, if we were to do it textbook, we should do exactly what you are saying. We should contact our loyal base, give them a sneak peek, get feedback, and then ship it to them individually. Is it happening? Yes, Alexander McQueen does that. So drops the collection, gets feedback, a sneak peek. Do you want that pair of pants with glitters or whatever? Just you, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ship it to door and bypassing e-commerce. Is it happening? Yes, should we do it? Yes. So you don't even communicate it. And if it sticks, it becomes new core. So this is the way to innovate. How do I see myself? We're an agency working with Louis Art, so we're a technology company. The brand remains the brand. So the homework, the DNA of being a brand remains the same. A brand should do amazing things, which is not only product, it's meta product and vision. Technology is just at the service of it. Blockchain has the advantage of being there already. The infrastructure is there. It's almost like the highways to get somewhere. They're already there. You just need to, you know, make good use of it. But a very, very good question. More questions. Otherwise, I'll call up people. Very good. Of course. <laughs> Did you notice any change in terms of the customer when you start to add this kind of uh, blockchain technology inside of the watch? What is very interesting about the product is like compared to other like NFT watches, what is the main product, here is completely on the background and is completely hide. Actually, you can buy the watch, you didn't even notice that there is like a kind of NFT certificate behind it. So is it something that you show it and you explain it and you use it as like a, a selling um, point or you just want to make it like on the background and just to ensure like uh, the tech? Yeah, absolutely. So from a marketing point of view, from a communication point of view, you don't talk technology. People don't give a shit which blockchain you're using. And they shouldn't. You shouldn't really, you know, who cares if you're using Hyperledger or a Polygon. So you talk about the benefits. What I'm doing, I am empowering you to do whatever the hell you want with my brand. And this is exactly what I should do. So this is what we say in communication. So for the moment, we attracted normal watch users. The minute that we're going to do NFTs and cryptocurrency 24-7, we're going to start to attract new kids, new generations. So I'm going to buy that watch instead of the other one because it gives me a fraction of a Bitcoin if I want to. It gives me NFTs that protects the value of the watch forever, even if I give it to my kids. Or So this is what's going to happen. The more the more I talk about this new reality. But for the moment, we really attracted watch lovers and we started to build this community of watch fanatics around the brand. And it's, it's working. More questions? I think we made it. Short and sweet. Super good, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you a lot, Francesco. So we are going to see in uh, 45 minutes now with uh, 
Claudia, who is going to present us like NFT and art. So I hope to meet you again in 45 minutes. Thank you. <laughs>